Hope you're doing well. Should be getting live on Facebook any minute now. And what's up, everybody? Welcome to today's video. It's me, Sammy Abasad. I'm Director of Education at T3 Live. We're going to be doing what we always do, which is go over the market. I'm going to share with you my swing ideas for next week. Uh, hope you are taking some of those. They're working out really nicely. But we'll go over those in the next few minutes. For now, a disclaimer, a standard required disclaimer to let you know that trading is risky and that whatever we discuss is for educational purposes only. I also want to announce that I have a free ebook, 100% free, zero hype ebook on trend analysis that I use on a daily basis in my trading. So check it out. Link is in the description. Okay? Link is in the description. But with that said, let's turn on the charts and get started, shall we? So here we go. All right. So we're going to go over the market. We're going to go over the swing ideas for next week. If you find benefit in today's video, you know what to do. Smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, please. I would appreciate it greatly. The market, the queues closed at all-time highs on Friday. And it was a really, really bullish day. This is the daily chart of the QQQ, which is the tracking ETF for the NASDAQ 100. Um, so the idea is not for me here to regurgitate what happened already last week. You already know what happened last week. The idea is to tell you what's, what I think is going to happen next week. And it's not, I'm going to be honest with you, it's not that easy because... One, the Qs is all out bullish, and so every other index right now. But what I wanted to say was the SPY, the IWM, and the Diamonds, the SP, S&P 500, the Russell 2000, and the Dow, the Dow 30, right, the Dow Jones, are all pretty extended. So they can easily start to pull back a little bit. I'm not, I'm not predicting this is the absolute top but they can start to pull back a little bit. So they're all extended far above the 20 MA. The diamonds, the IWM, and the SPY. The Qs is not extended at all and just made all-time highs. So that's the issue there. So in my opinion, the SPY, the IWM, the diamonds can pull back easily. The Qs is not extended. It's riding that 20 MA. Having said that, normally when the market makes a new 52-week high or all-time high, the next day we don't see follow-through. We actually see a bit of a sell-off or at least a red bar, some kind of red bar. So perhaps for Monday we might get a red bar or some kind of a red bar. But the difficult thing about the market is the little bit of divergence. It's not really a divergence. It's extension or the, in other words, the Qs is not overbought, the NASDAQ is not overbought, the SPY, the IWM, the diamonds are at the moment far above the 20. And, you know, just connect the lows or just draw a line over the bars. That's, you know, that's a little overbought, right? When the market is just grinding up, that's not overbought, right? No matter how far up it is. But when it starts to accelerate a little bit, it means it's a little bit overbought. So that's the issue for me. And that's why I think we can maybe see a pullback next week. But then you look at the Qs and, you know, and the Qs doesn't look necessarily like it's going to pull back. So that's the issue. So I'm not quite sure about next week. I've been saying for a long, long time, review every single week, the videos that I put out every single week. I've been saying this rally is just, there's something extraordinarily bullish about it. Um, so, and so, you know, we close at all-time highs. Of course, we're, the market is not reflecting the reality on the ground. It's just that the market is being flooded with money. And so it's not only counteracted the pandemic and the shutdown and the, the job losses, it actually, you know, it not only counteracted it, it, it made it even better than before in terms of how much capital 
is flooding the markets right now. Uh, so that's probably what's going on. At some point, in, I believe the market will have to reflect the reality on the ground. At some point, uh, do I know when? I don't. Um, but uh, we'll see. But for now, the market is bullish. Oil is pretty bullish. I gave you a buy setup last week. If you, you know, if you got the oil, how about oil stock? So I'm in USO, but oil still looks higher. It's a little extended too, but still looks high. I'm in USO. And then I don't know if you took the ideas from last week, but they worked yesterday, I think was the best, uh, one of the best swing uh, days in the swing account because I had IVR, which gapped up. I mean, at the in the pre-market was up 50%, 48%. In two days, it made, I think, 75% in just two days. And then we had the, in the, you know, as a position in the, that I called for the newsletter, CHK. We still have CHK. It went up 84%, I think. So between these two alone, uh, you know, that, that, that was really, really nice. I have also, you know, I have DK, not DKS, uh, I, I don't have my e -tra my Ameritra my uh, trade session account open. Uh, I have USO. I have PRTK. Is that the symbol PRTK? And I have uh, forgot the symbol. <laughs> it's a small oil stock DSKE. No, it's not DSKE. But at any rate, so yesterday was a really nice day. In fact, uh, last week I showed you my e trade account. I showed you I was up uh, three eighty seven. So last week I did the mentorship and I projected my screen live for five days in a row, I still was able to make 30 grand net. So 17 in this account, that's just the last five days. And notice year to date, it's over, here it is, it's 405 in the E-Trade account. And in the, in the Sterling account, uh, last week, I think I made about 14 or something like this. So month to date, uh, I don't know where it is, hold on. It totals by date, so where's month to date? <laughs> Let's see, oh, there it is, the date range. Mo this month, basically just the first five days of the month, 12 net, 12 and a half. So between the two accounts, that's over 30. And in this account for the year, so I crossed, uh, it's a little exciting, I crossed the half a million mark in five months, five months and one week, uh, in just between these two accounts. Uh, so there's this account, that's 117, 118 basically. And then the other one was 405, so that's actually 520k uh, or more. So, so it's, I'm you know proud of the achievement, but I'm honestly happy not just for me, but also for subscribers that are f able to follow these calls that I make and take advantage. And I hope I do this video once a week, so it's not a daily thing. I, I publish my plays every day for the uh, subscribers, but I hope. Uh, you know, I hope uh, you're able to take advantage of some of the ideas. Uh, I, I got just even this morning a message saying somebody that opened the account two months ago, this is their second month, uh, June is their second month, they already doubled their account. So I was thrilled for that person. Uh, so, you know, just saying, I'm not trying to show off or anything, but, uh, you know, I'm just uh, thrilled about the performance for the first five months and I hope we can continue at that same pace the rest of the year okay all right for next week here's what i got for you i got cnx looking good it triggered already on friday but i like it over the base still higher stop right here okay that's a cnx and then costco i like it as a long-term play it's pretty sloppy but if it takes out the base i think if it takes out actually thursday's high it already took out the base but it needs to take this bar out i think costco is a long-term play I think Costco goes higher. It didn't pull back that much with the shutdown, and I think it's going to do really well in the coming months and years. So I like Costco as a long-term play. It's not going to be an explosive name like like the, like some of the mortgage REITs, the, like the IVR, the, like the CHK, you know, oil. It's not going to be. But, uh, but as a long-term play, I do like. Uh, CSLT is a transition on the daily chart. So over the base right here, it's a penny stock. Stop under those. I saw more penny stocks doubling and tripling in one day. HTZ went up. Uh, it closed the day up. Uh, I should have it on my watch. Up 92%. At some point, it was up like 150. 
But not just this. I mean, VAL went up 158. It closed up 158. OAS 125. I saw more QEP, which I, I made a, I made a little bit of money on, went up 70 percent. CPE uh, went up uh, 71 percent. I, WLL 66, WPG 45. I have them on a watch list in front of me here. Uh, I traded the, uh, what's the symbol? I, well, it's in my account. I mean, I traded it. Uh, what was it? Uh, hold on. I'm curious. It was an oil stock. It made good money yesterday. It was the best, actually. Oh, this one. Uh, OSK. No, no, I'm sorry. Oxy. See, I'm bad with the symbols. Oxy. So that made actually 3800 yesterday. Uh, so that went up 45%, I think. Oxy, oil, uh, rig went up, uh, I don't have it on a watch list. Rig went up 57%. And CHK, which is my pick from that, you know, the one that I played, uh, as well as it being uh, an official play for Strategic Swing Trader uh, newsletter members, it went up 84.5%. So it's just amazing. I've seen more b bigger moves in one day than I've seen almost all year. Uh, CSLT is a is a penny stock that does look higher. Limited target though, $1 and then 180 on the CSLT. I did, it's not one of the picks for me for Monday. If you're a subscriber, you feel free to log on to your account, D3 Live account. You'll see which ones I will be playing in my own account on Monday. Eyes is a transition A. All the plays, most of the plays that worked um, uh, last week were, were all transition A. What's the transition A? Is when the, when the moving average comes from underneath price and starts to curl and point up. You see it? So that's the 20 MA comes from underneath price, curls and starts to point up. So that's what we have here. CSLT. But again, it's not one of the ones that I'm going to play. Eyes is a biotech stock, transition A. FTK already triggered. I'm not in it, already triggered, but looks higher, looks higher. Um, and then INPX is another transition A. So same idea, basically. LPSN is a daily buy setup. It's a penny stock, but it's a daily buy setup. I don't seek out penny stocks, but the truth is they move, they move so much more than the other stocks. It's incredible. Uh, I should actually seek them out. What I seek out, what I look for are chart patterns regardless of the price of the stock, irrespective of the price of the stock. So I look for certain patterns, and whatever, if the, hap, the price happens to be uh, $1 or $1,000, I'm still going to play it. Though having said that, a dollar, a dollar stock going to $2 happens every day. We see a dollar stock going to $2. It, it's extremely rare. I've never ever seen a $1,000 stock go to $2,000 in one day. Does that make sense? So the low price stocks are a lot more explosive. Um, and then here's another one. MLND is a daily buy setup. And, you know, you can get a lot of shares because it's low priced. Whereas if it's, a, if it's Google or Amazon or Tesla or one of these high flyers, you can't even get one share uh, if you have a really small account, right? And VIV, another transition A. I'm playing some of these. But that, you know, that information is reserved for paying members. And, uh, but I'm playing some of these. Now I can tell you exactly which ones. If you're a member, you can, again, log on to your account or you'll, you'll get the email on Monday at 8 a.m., uh, the newsletter. This one is a breakout, OMI, looks higher over the base. And I like it as a long-term play. Transitioning on the monthly chart, on the weekly also. That's not bad on the weekly. So I like it. I like it. Plug is a one, two, three over the red bar. Stop under it. Target six bucks on plug. Now, the thing about the plug is, do I think it's going to get to six bucks right away? I don't think so. So this one, you know, it doesn't have a ton of reward to risk. Otherwise, the pattern is great. Love this pattern. And I like the fact that it's based on the hourly chart. So as soon as the moving average on the hourly chart catches up, it should go higher. The only issue is, it only has two to one reward to risk. And unless the market stays strong, I don't think it's getting up to six bucks anytime soon. So that's the only issue. And that's why I'm not going to play it, even though I actually like the chart pattern a lot. PRTK is like the OMI. 
PRTK, very, very similar to the OMI, and it, it's a transition on the monthly chart, uh, pharmaceutical, weekly, okay? So those two are similar. Um, RRC is a breakout, beautiful, over the base, over the double top. A double top is normally bearish, but the break of a double top, the failure of a bearish pattern is bullish, right? So long over the base, stop under it, and I don't know if I have target for this. It, it's got to be big, like 10 bucks, 12 bucks, 11 dollars or so for target one. So this is this is nice. This is nice. Uh, SCLP is another breakout, super bullish. Looks really good. Only issue I worry about, I'm concerned about, is the reward to risk. Long stop. Beautiful. Problem is. Target is only 16 bucks, I think, if I recall correctly, which is over here. Uh, so that's not a lot. It's already at 14.50. That's only a dollar fifty. That's a, that's the main issue with it. Okay, that's the main issue. Another issue would be it hasn't based long enough. I like to play right off the 20 MA. Notice how when the 20 MA touches the price, that's when it explodes. Uh, so I, I would have liked it. To, I would like it to base a little for a little while longer. But the the biggest issue is the worth to risk. Uh, S-E-E-L is a daily buy setup, right? Uh, looks higher to the prior pivot high. And then SWN is an oil stock that triggered already. I didn't get it. You can only capture, catch so many of them, right? Uh, but I still like it higher. It's a lot more bullish than the rest of the oil stocks, right? Has a void above to at least 425, probably to five, 475 or so, 489. So I would say that... I would consider that to be target one and target two. But of course, it's not going to get there right away because it, this is not something that fell apart during the pandemic. It, it it actually went higher in March. You know, it's been, it did drop in January or February, but it's been, it's been on an uptick for a while. So this is not going to explode like the CHK did or, or some of the other oil stocks that I showed you. But it looks higher. It looks solid to me. Some of the shorts, shorts, not very good, but I am going to play two of them. I'm going to play two of them short for next week. Amarin is more of a long-term short if it can break under the base. So Amarin as a short right here, stop right here, okay? And then target would be the prior the prior low around four bucks. It's a weekly sell setup on Amarin, but, uh, you know, I don't love it because we got three red bars in a row. I like to be in the first bar already, so I'd love to see it actually move up a little bit and then fail then short under the pivot, or if it can continue to base for, for a couple more weeks, it would become even better. But Amarin looks slower. BDX is, is trying to roll over on the monthly chart. Now, BDX is, is, a, is a really good company, good, good stock, so I don't think this is going to fall apart, but on the month, this is a monthly chart. For the first time in, in years, in 10 years, basically, starting to look a little, a little weak, a little bearish. You look at the weekly chart also right off the declining 20. You look at the daily chart and it's got a sell setup. So the short on this would be the entry would be under this, this bottoming tail bar is low. I don't know what it is, but you can check. You know, it's 239.60. Stop is over 245.50 and then target 230. The prior pivot low. Uh, Fgen is better and it has a nice big rounding top. The bigger the top, the bigger the drop, as they say. And target would be the prior low. It's a weekly sell setup, basically. Beautiful. Lulu is a little climactic. Now it's not as climactic as remember the DXCM from two weeks ago, as a you know mentioned it as a climactic sell setup, right? Remember that? I actually said 350 was the target. It dropped, I think, to 320. No, it didn't drop to 320. It dropped to 336. Uh, but uh, so basically, it dropped below the top of the base, which was my target. So this is a little similar. It's way up, but it doesn't have the wide range bars. Look at them weekly. Look at the monthly. So it does look like it could come in. I don't think it's going to collapse. Entry on the Lulu would be under the pivot on the hourly chart. Stop is at the all-time highs. And then the target would be this space or the 20MA, whichever, whichever comes first on Lulu. So short, stop, and then target would be the rising 20. It's not one of the ones that I'm going to play, but it looks pretty interesting. MNK is more of a longer term watch. It looks super, super weak. Look at the weekly. It's a sell setup off the moving average. Look at the monthly, it looks slower. So I like it short, but it's a little sloppy because the entry sh should be under the base. But when you, where you enter should also be 
not at support. There's a bottoming tail. There's another bottoming tail. I like the, the big topping tail. This was a green bar that got negated. When a green bar gets negated, that's, that's bearish. That's really bearish. It means the buyers got caught. So I, I do like the MNK, but it's a little sloppy. PPC is had some news on Wednesday. Thursday was a narrow range bar. Friday didn't participate with the market. So I like it short under 1824 by 1910. Target, I don't know what the target is. I don't, I don't remember. The prior low, 1575. That's the PPC. And then SY is a sell setup. Too strong of a retracement, a bit of a stronger retracement. But uh, interesting weekly. I'm going to let it go, but I'll be watching it. And then VYR, I don't even remember what this is. Oh, this is a low price stock under the base as a short. It looks all right. Uh, you know, it looks okay. As you can tell, it's not my favorite. So we have some okay watches, the, the bearish watches. And we have some pretty amazing bullish watches. Um, we have a lot of them, actually. And we have a lot of these um, low-priced that are transitioning higher. And those are the ones that make a lot of money. I think, you know, if, just, you know, if you want to see, uh, I think in terms, of, uh, in terms of profit, HTZ was my best winner this year, $41,000. It wasn't just one play. It was multiple. MRO, oil. TGE, oil. MTDR, oil. MFA is mortgage REIT. USO is oil, obviously. But it's not a stock. EVRI, I don't remember. I think it's either hospital, hospitality or mortgage REIT. I don't remember the, what the DRH is. PBR is oil. DBI, I think retail. IVR is mortgage REIT. DO is oil. FTI is oil. P10 is oil. You see what I mean? So a lot of these... Uh, oil stocks made a lot of money uh, this year, so and and they're continuing to. So I, I like that. Uh, so and I got a bunch on the ah. Uh, I was not showing you the screen. My bad. I was just showing you this. I was just showing you this basically that a lot of these transition A plays made made most of the money, right? That's what I was showing you. My bad. But at any rate. Uh, Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget, I got this uh, free ebook for you if you want to check it out. The link is in the description. You will like it. It's not high P sexy kind of video or uh, uh, ebook, but it is stuff, tools, and tactics that I use on a daily basis. Every single day in my uh, trading, I use these. Uh, tools that I'm sharing with you in this ebook. Okay, link is in the description. And with that said, hope you enjoyed today's video. I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button if you found benefit in today's video. As always, I hope you have a great trading week next week. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us info at t3live.com. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon. Ciao, everybody.